Alright you guys, so as promised, we're going to be doing some problems from SAT practice test number 10. This is the math no calc section. And there are some pretty simple problems as it starts out with. Some basic algebra that we should be able to do. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and get started. Alright, let's do the first one. Well, what value of Z satisfies the equation above? So, um, and actually even before we do that, Let's go ahead and see how much time we have. So ideally you want to finish this. So you have 25 minutes to do 20 questions. So I'll put a timer for around that much time. We might not finish in 25 minutes, but I want us to finish some around that. All right, let's get started. Okay, so let's see what value of Z satisfies the equation above. So if you move Z um, uh, or to this side, then you get 3z plus 1 equals, or uh, not that. Let's subtract z from both sides, actually. That makes a lot more sense. So we get z plus 1 equals 0, so z equals negative 1. All right, and it makes sense because negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. So the answer for number 1 is b. All right, we look at number dose, number 2. Television with a price that starts with $300 is to be purchased with initial payment of 60 and weekly payments of 30. Okay, which of the following equations can be used to find the number of weekly payments W that are required to complete the purchase so there are no taxes or fees? This is a lot of stuff. Okay, so think of this you have a TV that's cost $100. So you first you have to pay 60 and then you have to pay $30 for a certain amount of weeks. Um, and how we would how I would do it is I would say that 300 is the total price you have to pay right um, so you can eliminate these choices just like that it's C. okay common sense I don't solve anything number three the table above sh shows shipping charges for an online retailer that sells sporting goods there is a linear relationship between the shipping charge and the weight of the merchandise which function can be used to determine the total shipping charge f of x in dollars for an order with the merchandise weight of x pounds okay so this is the merchandise weight this is charge um and basically they're saying what's the relationship between um f of x where um let's see can you determine the total shipping charge okay so this is the y and this is the x um so basically uh, we can't use a calculator, so before you even think of doing that. Now, obviously, the shipping charge is more than the mechanical or merchandise weight. You can write A, um, and now let's see. Um, B, C, and D are interesting options. Um, let's think about it this way. Let's say 0.99 is approximately 1, 11.9 is about 12. If we do, um, let's see. Uh, okay. Let's say we have 10, right? 10 times 1 is 10, and 10 plus um, 12 is 22. So that approximately seems right. So let's try 40. 40 times 1 is, well, 40, and 40 plus 12 is 51. So that seems about right. If you try something like 3, 3.39, I'll round that about to 3.5, which let's say we have 10 times 7 is 70, over 2 is 35. Seems a bit extreme. Um, okay. But, yeah, I mean, that's kind of how it is. But B clearly seems like the best answer choice. All right. Let's go and take a look at numero four. So this is the line in the XY plane above represents the relationship between the height, H of X, and feet, and the base diameter X. And blah, 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 blah. How much greater is the height of a Doric column that has a base diameter of five feet than the height of a Doric column that has a base diameter of two feet? Okay. So X is the base diameter in feet for the cylinder Doric column. Um, okay, so H of X, so this is the height, and this is the base diameter. Okay, so how much greater is the height for a Doric column that has a base diameter of 5? So base diameter of 5 has a height of 35, and the height of a column that has a base diameter of 2 is 14. So... How much does it compare? 35 minus 14, um, that is 21. So the answer is C. 
Let's see. Boom. Number five. Okay. If x is greater than zero, which of the following is equivalent to the expression? Well, square root of nine x squared, isn't that just three x? You know, if I multiply this by three x, I get nine x squared. So let's say. Uh, let's take a look at number six. Okay. What are all the values of x that satisfy the equation above? x minus, or okay, sorry, x squared minus 1 is nothing but x minus 1 times x plus 1. You can kind of visualize that. So if you divide it, we're just left with x plus 1, right? And x plus 1 is equal to negative 2, okay? Uh, and if x plus 1 is equal to negative 2, then we subtract 1, and we get x is equal to negative 3. So, 6 is it. Alright. Let's go and take a look at number 7. The graph of y equals f of x is shown in the x-ray plane. What is the value of f of 0? Okay. f of 0. So, when x equals 0, well, x equals 0 right over here, right? f of 0, and we get a value of 4. So, the answer is d. Okay. Pretty simple, history 4. Number 8 in the figure above, point B lies on line ad what is the value of 3x okay so first you got to figure it out well essentially okay if this is 90 degrees then pretty clearly that this is also 90 degrees right um okay because 90 plus 90 is 180 and we know that this is 180 degrees so we have 2x so 4x 5x is equal to 90 okay 5x is 5x is equal to 90 degrees okay so if we divide both sides by 5, obviously we get x equals 18, but it's asking for 3 of x, and okay, 8, 16, 24, um, so yeah, 18 is c. Alright, number 9, which of the following is the equation of line L in the x, y plane above? Line L, right here, okay. Which one of these makes sense? Well, okay, they're all dealing with negative 4, so I wonder what that's, what that's about. At the point... What x is 0, x is 0, y equals negative 4. Okay, so we can say that x plus y equals negative 4. Now let's see if that's always true. Well, here it's negative 4 is x and y 0. Negative 2 and 2, here we have negative 1 and negative 3. So, yeah, that works out pretty well. All right, so let's see. Okay, number 10. Looks like the, the halfway point. The graph of y equals 2x squared plus 9x plus 12 is shown. If the graph crosses the y-axis at the point 0k, what is the value of k? Okay, so you got to figure it out. got to figure out what, what, what the heck is this value, okay? Um, so it crosses the x-axis. So basically, when x is 0, what is y? Plug a 0 into this equation, well, this is 0, this is 0, so we're just left with 12, so 10 should be D. Okay, uh, number 11. Oh, okay, I love these equations. What is the equation of a circle? A circle in the x planet center, 5, 7, and radius 2, which is the function of the equation of a circle? Well, the equation of a circle, I don't think I told you yet, is x minus h the whole squared plus y minus k the whole squared uh, and if you don't know, let's see what's r squared, or basically h, k are the coordinates of the center of the circle. So we're looking for x minus 5 of the whole squared. So get rid of these two options equals r squared, well, 2 squared is 4, so 11 has to be a. All right. Number 12. The figure above triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEF. Okay. What is the value of cosine of E? What is the value of cosine of this angle? Okay. So we have two similar triangles. Okay, they're similar in some sense. We don't know how. Um, well, what is the value of cosine of E? Well, isn't that similar to angle B? Because it goes with B. Well, what is the value of cosine of B? Well, cosine is just adjacent over the hypotenuse. For the adjacent, um, the adjacent is 12 and the hypotenuse is 13. So 12 over 13. So let's B. <laughs> okay. Let's take a look at number 13. The x-y plane, the function has two x-intercepts. What is the distance between the two x-intercepts? X-intercepts is basically the value when y equals 0. If I factor this out, it's not just, what is it? Okay, factors of 4. 
x plus 4 times x plus 1, right? Isn't that what it basically is? What is the distance between the two x-intercepts? Okay, well, they're both y equals 0. This is basically a point where we have negative 4 and 0 and negative 1 and 0. And the distance between negative 1 and negative 4 is 3. Okay.